here you see one of the tubes and actually it's mounted to the knee like this. So you see it in this folder. Um, and you have like two uh, tubes like this and it has a distraction modus on it. So as soon as you have mounted it with these wires in the bone, the it bone shows pins, how that would sit against your leg one. So how would it physically yeah. go? So you, your leg is in full extension. It would be mounted like this to the leg, and, how do you and one on the other side. How do you physically mount it? What, do you, what does it involve with the procedure? Yeah, we make small step incisions through the skin. We put these kind of wires, these kind of wires in the bone, very strong fixation. Then we put this frame on, we fix it. How, how, how long does that take? That's general anesthetic. How long does that take to do that, to physically put the frame on? 40 minutes, Yeah. so four zero, And then at the surgery itself, we're gonna distract for two millimeters already. So we are distracting. What do you mean by distraction? So the knee joint is the end of the femur and the beginning of the tibia. We're gonna distract these two bones, osteocartilage layers, as we call it, for two millimeters to start with. And in the next three days, the patient himself will distract additional three millimeters. So a total of five millimeters is enough to distract the joint and to get this treatment working. And is it, is it a painful procedure? Not. It is um, uh, also the distraction later on, the, the three days of one millimeter distraction is not painful for the patient. Then the patient goes within crutches, full weight bearing. So you can so walk on it fully. You can walk on it. And it has kind of a mechanism in itself that the during full weight bearing, the surfaces of the joint cannot touch. So it's a spring mechanism. It's slightly spring loaded, isn't it? So yeah. yeah. And because of that, um, the what we call homeostasis, so the internal the environment well, of the, the well being, yeah, the well being the of well being of the joint is the same. Um, and all the fluids your joint needs are circling around while you have the treatment for six weeks. And in these six weeks, the effect will start already. And the effect is that your cartilage, even if, if it's totally worn out, worn out surfaces of cartilage. So that bone start, on bone. Yeah. Start growing a kind of replacement cartilage. And the good thing of that is that after you remove the frame for six, after six weeks. So it stays on for a total of six weeks. Six weeks. And then take it off. The, that's the best. Take it off. And then you move the knee again. And then you start with your rehab, which takes another one or two months. Just with your physiotherapist. You are full weight bearing then already. And then your fast score, your pain score, which is zero to ten, zero having no pain. 10 being in excruciating pain, drops typically from like eight in an arthritic knee to like two to one. In two months. In six weeks of treatment, you already have that drop. And we have proven so, in the several studies that it stays like that for many, many years. How, so there's an eight year, 10 year results now, aren't there? There are now 10 year results of, uh, of the groups in our studies. There are even longer term results of a pilot study. And these were knees in young people who had no other option than total joint replacement. And they still do not have total joints in their knees. So the, the, the cartilage is not replaced. They have grown cartilage in the meantime. So it's not like a wonder treatment. It's more like you will postpone any uh, surgery like knee replacement, whether it's a uni knee or total knee, for many years. And that's years to win when you're a young person. And how, how does it work, Ron? How, what's the mechanism for distraction? Does anyone understand it? There are a lot of studies, basic studies, uh, as we call it, uh, in the lab. And they're looking at cartilage itself. They're looking at blood. They're looking at urine. They're looking at all kinds of factors of cartilage growth. And they have proven that it works like that. Cartilage regenerates to a certain level with this kind of treatment. The precise mechanism behind it is still not uncovered. There's definitely an upregulation up of your own stem cells though, aren't they? You have detected that increased MSCs, mesenchymal stem cells in, in the knee joints yeah. um, as part of the basic science. So some of it's understood, but some of it still obviously needs to be worked out. It needs to be worked out. It, there's a whole team working on that. 
But the fun of it is, like in many orthopedic procedures, we've already proven that it works in patients. And now we're, we're trying to get the, the puzzle solved with each and every piece, how it exactly works. And, and what, what about the overall success rate? If you said, you know, you're going to have this in terms of risks, first of all, is it a risky procedure? Or is it a straight, is it a, a low risk procedure? As a procedure, it's a low risk procedure. However, you are putting pins through the skin to the bone. And one of the risks you have is the complication of a infection of these pins. So.